you know, it was really, really uh, fun right. to meet people from around the country. Some people traveled as far as New York to go to the Ohio conference. Well, yeah. So it, it just yeah. It just shows you the the interest in the Bigfoot community that you know they're willing uh, to do that. I mean, um, of course, it helps when you have great headliners like Ken Gerhardt and Cliff Rackman and Bobo right. and Mills and Tom Yamron. They they were the headliners at the Ohio conference. And uh, Mark DeWorth was an excellent host there. So right, and you know, and Lori, we had a lot of fun. Got to, to meet a lot of people. Right, and it Lori- was at uh, the Salt Fork Lodge in Ohio. We had a nice eight-hour drive there <laughs> from uh, Chicago. So it, and- it's a lot of fun. Um, the other thing that we gave away was our commemorative poster. Uh, celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Patterson Gimlin film. Right. So we gave that away, and that that was one of the the hot tickets there. And people got their poster, and they got it signed by by the speakers that were at the conference. So that was a lot of fun too. Right. And so uh, now, and Lori came all the way out from from Washington State to um, to uh, yeah to be with you. Yeah. And and, and yeah, she yeah. If, well, if you, any, yeah, anybody who doesn't um, know Lori Simmons. Yeah, she came in from uh, from Seattle. I picked her up in Chicago, and then we drove straight to um, the Salt Fork Park Lodge. I think her plane came in at uh, around noon. We didn't we didn't get to Ohio till about eleven o'clock at night uh, to that to the lodge because of construction and traffic, and it was just a mess. <laughs> right. But we finally got there and we were um we went to to rest cuz we were tired from that long trip and so we could be refreshed for the morning. Yeah. Well, th- well thank you so much for calling in Maria. I really needed you to call in right then and that was you were the perfect savior for me. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> well. I if if well, what I want, what I want to do is, I just want to let Patrick respond to some of that here. And if 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 Patrick could give the story of uh, of Lori Simmons a little bit, that would be good. And what I'll do is, I'll just turn, I'll just uh, uh, let let Patrick tell that story, and then we'll we'll come back with you. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, hold on. Go ahead, Patrick. Yeah, so so Lori Simmons, um, you know, built on the work on her father. Uh, she's she's up in your area, I believe, in the, in the Northern Cascades, and she's been having interactions most of her life. Uh, and the, the uh, she seems to have a certain location, a certain tree where it'll interact with her, and they'll they'll do thumps back at each other. It'll growl. Um, I've actually went up there with my son, and it growled at me. Um, and so she's been really trying to further what her father started, um, and he he did a lot of, of the research on the Sasquatch. So she's got you know she's got a book out, and she's done some work with uh, John Bender Nagel. And so it's a really interesting story if you want to look up Lori Simmons uh, online and see her story. She's there's some some pretty compelling um, game camera of of a nights that they were doing <laughs> where something snuck up on them that you can check it out. Um, I do want to kind of back up a little bit, though, uh, Kevin. Uh, Maria is great for me because because Maria is a person that can kind of yin and yang when it comes to promoting the the, the Big Book Portal. This isn't really a money making endeavor. Um, the the Bigfoot community is just not large enough, I think. You know, as far as the the researcher, and we made a really conscious decision to stick with the the keeping it as a service for researchers and, and getting the information out. You know, again, uh, uh, we don't do any clickbait type stuff or anything. Whatever's out there is out there. Mm-hmm. We do marketing and promotions and stuff mostly because we both spent a lot of time and effort, uh, you know, creating this website for people to use. And we'd like to get the word out so as many people as possible, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, have it to use or are aware of it, you know, and, and we'll use it. And that's kind of our reward. Um, but it doesn't, you know, outside of reality TV shows, I don't think anybody's making much money in the Bigfoot community. Yeah, it it, it certainly seems like that's one of those things where, um, yeah, if, if people think that you're going to make money in the Bigfoot world, uh, 
don't bother. You, you know, yeah, I know, find, I find know yourself the, I know a ghost these or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know these these authors, and I've talked to them and kind of compare notes about you know how much money they make off of their books, and and uh, you know I have a good friend of mine that once told me it's like you know if I really wanted to make money I'd, I'd create a, a a YouTube video on kittens, you know. Uh, there's a lot more, there's a lot more audience for kittens than there are for Bigfoot. So, but it, like I said, we do spend a lot of time on it. And, and so we'd like for as many people within the community, at least be aware of it. Uh, so that if, if they find it useful, um, you know, they chose to use it or not to. Right. And, and so, yeah, it, it, it seems to me like that's one of those, uh, scenarios where people, People do think that because uh, you know people like Bobo and and uh, Cliff Brackman and places and Matt Moneymaker and things like that seem to have made money in the past, uh, at least having a show. That uh, this this is some way that uh, y- you know you you can make money on it. But I, like I said, it's if you're not doing this because you're doing this for the labor of love, then there's not a lot of there's not a lot of joy in it. Um, that, which leads me to which leads me to ask the question there, uh, Maria. Now, why did you start getting into Bigfoot? Actually, um, I first read about uh, the Patterson Gimlin film when I was in eighth grade. I was um, in the reading club at the library for the summer reading club, so I had to pick up books and read them. And one of the books that I picked was a Ripley's Believe It or Not. And that was the first time that, um, that, you know, I, I read about it and I'm like, wow, that's interesting. You know, and it, and stuff in that book, it's like, wow, should I believe it or not? Or is that, that's pretty incredible. So that always stood in the back of my mind. And, uh, and actually Bigfoot is, I don't really come from the Bigfoot community. I actually come from ghost and paranormal, um, groups. Um, I, I, I joined them because I had some losses in my family and I was wondering if I could get in contact with them. So I, I joined the ghost and paranormal groups and, uh, in, in some of the discussion and topics, they were saying people are, you know, take their EVP, uh, recorders and, and they're, they're trying to, to listen to ghosts and stuff. And, and a lot of people were saying, wow, what you're listening to is not a ghost. That's a Bigfoot. I'm like, what? What does that mean? They, they're like, yeah, that's what Bigfoot do. They, they knock on trees. They, they throw rocks. Um, they, if they're seeing eye shine, no, that's a Bigfoot. That's not a ghost. You guys are nuts. Why, what are you talking about? So somebody uh, posted a link to a Bigfoot group. And then I went ahead and followed it. And then, you know, I noticed there were more Bigfoot groups. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then um, one night I was at home not doing anything, and, and I started watching Animal Planet, and I saw Finding Bigfoot, and I was hooked. <laughs> so then I started looking into the Bigfoot subject, and that's, that's how I came into the Bigfoot world. But um, listening to... Um, you know, a lot of what they call woo paranormal. Remember, I come from paranormal groups and stuff like that. So I've already that, that there's stuff that we can't explain sometimes. So to me, that's not unusual. Okay, well, I guess it's something to look at. Right. Yeah. And so it was interesting. So that, but you were experiencing this sort of paranormal activity that people were classifying as, as Bigfoot in a, in an urban environment? Right. No, I wasn't experiment, experiencing it. They, um, the paranormal groups were talking about oh. doing that, that it's happening at cemeteries. They went to talk to, you know, they, they do night sits at cemeteries and they try to, you know, touch into to ghosts and stuff like that. Right. And other people were commenting, well, those aren't ghosts. Ghosts don't throw rocks. Ghosts don't have eyes shine. Um, they heard what, um, you know, were the popular thing that um, Ron Moorhead, they heard like chattering and samurai talk. And they're like, ghosts don't do that. That's Bigfoot. And everyone's like, what? 
Right. So they're like, yeah, you know, you should look into the Bigfoot groups and you'll see that that's what they do. But no, I didn't experience that. However, when I was growing up, there was a ghost in my home when we were little. The little old man that owned the home before us died in the home. And he would always walk up and down the hallways. And uh, one time, um, my mom, you know, it was three girls. We're all... We're in a room, so imagine what happens when we're when you're little. All you do is giggle and and laugh, and you're not sleeping. So my mom would always say, "Hey, go to bed. It's late. It's a school night." So we were just giggling and laughing, still being, you know, we were seven, eight, six years old, and um, we heard um, my mom walking down the hallway, which we thought was my mom, and. Uh, she she went she came in the room and she stood at the foot of our bed and we had like three twin beds in the room at that time and then I thought I was going to be a smart ass with my mom and I turned the light and scare her so we turned the light on and there was nobody there and we were all screaming and my mom <laughs> ran in the room what's going on I'm like oh we thought it was you wow and then we were saying he was the ghost. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 did that ever happen more than once, or is that is that yes, one? Of, yes, yeah, yes. He would walk up and down the hallways in, in our home, and we had a, a wooden um, wooden floor, so you could hear the creak. Or it could have been the house settling. I don't know, but we were right. We were afraid, and then my dad eventually sold the home, and we got a new home. And, Right, and then it, and that was the end of it. And it didn't it didn't follow you then after that. You know, no. But when I bought my home, my son Anthony said he would see shadows in his room, and he would hate sleeping in there. Right, and um, and one time, my my bedroom was kitty corner from the bathroom, and I always had the bathroom light on because Anthony was scared. So right. I saw. I, I was um, laying down facing the wall and, you know, you could see people pass by the hallway and my husband was sleeping next to me. And I know Anthony was in the little toddler bed in our room. But he didn't want to, he didn't want to sleep in, in his room. And I saw somebody walk down the hallway. And I saw the shadow on the wall and, and I elbowed my husband and I said, Hey, Jesus, wake up. there's somebody in the house. And he's like, what? What happened? And I told him, I said, somebody just walked across the hallway. Oh, wow. And then he got up and went to check. He says, there's nobody here. I said, oh, we're getting the hospital. So we did, and it never happened again. Yeah. But that was creepy. Right. Well, you know, it's it's crazy that, you know, I, like I said, I think in a lot of ways, of people, people, you know, a lot of times they don't. If if it seems like you're experiencing one part of the paranormal, um, well, let me ask you this before I let you go because uh, I know that somebody else is trying to call in, Maria. Um, okay. Do, do, have you ever seen a UFO? What's that? Have you ever seen a UFO? No. 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 It, it's hard to see it over here because. You have uh, the lights of the airport. So, you know, it's a very urban area. The muni- You know, it's a big city. So the city lights up everything. I really have to drive to, like, the middle of Indiana to see a clear night. Right. So, no, I, I have not seen a UFO. But, hey, who knows, right? Well, and, and you're- <laughs> I'll be at the camp out with uh, Jill Smith uh, this coming weekend. Yeah. So it will be my first squatching experience. Oh. Uh, Patrick was nice enough to give me a little tour of Greenwater when I went there in November, but it wasn't a, a, a camp out or we didn't do any research. We just, he was just nice, nice enough to, you know, take me there and show me everything that I've been seeing online. But right. yeah, it's going to be fun this weekend. I'll be there um, at the camp out uh, from June 30th through July the 6th. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I and think I'm I, bringing my daughters too, so yeah. they're going to be in for a treat. Well, I think I think we're going to 
uh, we're going to try to stop down and well, we'll, we'll be with you. And, and, uh, you know, there's going to be some UFO people there. There's going to be a whole bunch of people there. So, 